Hello, it's Sarah. I'm in the craft room. This is the tile stone and grout sealer that I was sharing yesterday. And I just poured it in this little cup I have and I'm using a brush that I really don't need or care about. But it's water-based so it should be fine. I'll clean the brush. And it said not too thick so I'm trying to just get it on there. It's a very wet um, you know, I've used all types of products to seal my wood pieces early on, and I'm just going to put it down on here. Um, when I didn't have a proper sealer when I was first starting out, I had varnish because, you know, I would always varnish, and um, I mixed the paint with the varnish. I mean, I used to do whatever, like, I don't know. Then, now that I've been doing mosaics, they have you just put, like, that's what this is. This is just well bond with water mixed up in a um, little thing. And that supposedly can seal the substrate for you. Now, the substrate is anything that you're working on. This happens to be an actual rock. And I'm going to do this bad boy. Ugh. This is the one I think I'm going to use for um, Kiwi's headstone. <laughs> um, but I noticed that where this was in the ground, there's like a line going around it. I think, you know, it probably sat in the earth for some amount of time before it was dug up. So it's stained is what I'm saying. I don't care. I think what you're going to notice is the artwork. Um, I'm trying to, ooh, this does have a little bit of a smell to it. Um, not, not real bad. Uh, I've smelled, eh, it kind of smells like, I don't know, plasticky or something. But what I was getting at is, like, you can see the line really strong right there. See that? I believe that's from this sitting in the ground, on the ground for years, or I don't know. I got this from... A place where the where like your landscaping guys go and they um they get a whole bunch of rocks so they use like a crane or I don't know the name of things a backhoe <laughs> and probably um, just get a whole bunch of them and put it on the trailer and then they go fill in you know like your by your pool or wherever you're gonna put them um, we have rocks by our pool but they're real little. They're little, like, pebbly ones, and they're, um, white. No, they're not white. They're just all, they're light-colored, but they're stones. They're, like, brown. And anyway, one of these rocks I'm going to do first. I'm not going to do the kiwi one first because, you know, I want to practice. Um, so one of the other big ones that I got, I'm going to do... A rock like a rock that I'm gonna put by the pool so it's gonna be among all the little pebbles and just like a, a bigger rock sticking out of it and I think I want to do like either a fish or like a frog I think a frog could be super cute but I'm gonna have to find a pattern or something um, you know I can draw myself a little frog I actually have patterns that artists uh, decorative artists have like um what is her name Sonia Richardson is such a whimsical artist OMG I know exactly the frog I'm gonna try to do I don't know if I could do them in mosaics the way because she's such a delicate painter and um all right I feel like he's done I'm gonna move him over to the I put these guys on a table right by the window so I'm gonna try to let them dry in the window but like this one, hmm, let me see if this, like say this one is sitting, yeah, that could be good. Like he'll just be sitting by the pool and I'll put a frog right here. I just think that's cute. And then when you're swimming around, you, you know, you'll happen to notice them. I don't know. <laughs> um, I personally... When I create, I love to display it somewhere, and I just redid 
my um, our kitchen. Um, we did the countertops. I made a video, but it's so makes you dizzy. So I don't know. I guess I could redo it and do it a little better. I get too carried away with my enthusiasm, and my filming isn't the best. So, um, anywho, we redid. That's where I was for the period of time between my last YouTube video when I said, I'm back, I want to get back in the craft room. I literally didn't think that, you know, my craft room was going to be disassembled because we put new floors in here. So everything got changed around. I, I reorged it to a degree, like just where all my mosaics were. I really was able to get all that stuff kind of put. My beads are over there. Um, anywho, you know, as crafters, we have so many interests and supplies for each thing, and I am the worst because I never can stick to one craft. I tend to ooh, be a jack of all trades and a master of none, and I have a lot of stuff. Um, starting to realize, though, that a lot of the, um, I'm just getting a paper towel. A lot of the jewelry findings that I used to collect early on when I was doing mixed media, like assemblage and stuff, I'm going to be able to use in my mosaics. And so now I'm getting excited. And specifically, like look at this. This has, see this line? There's a line right from this big divot. It goes here all the way around. It looks like it's a crack. So that kind of bums me out because... I don't want to put my little frog on here and then, although I'm sure he's been out, this rock has been out in the elements and he stayed together. But anyway, it's kind of like a, a little lobotomy of the, <laughs> of the stone. Um, you know, so this is my first experience with these big river rocks. And that's why I wanted to take that class by Chris Emmert. Um, she, I found her on... Uh, I'll get back to the house, to doing the floors and all that. But I found her on um, Mosaics, Mosaic Mentoring, I think is the name of the um, Facebook page. Man, guys, if you're into, I don't know, whatever craft you're into, hopefully there's like a Facebook page that people can share their work. Um, so like I know there is with um, wood burning, for instance, like pyrography. Um, and then there's one for plants, which I love. Um, I think it's called Plants at Home. So what happens is, is like if anyone has a question or an issue, they just post it. They'll take a picture and post and say and ask a question. And then you get the input from the whole rock making community, the whole plant growing community like it's wonderful i have learned so much from the um from the mosaics one um so anywho chris emmer i found her on there and she has mainly like an etsy store i think and she sells her rocks but she also had a uh a class that she had videoed so i took it of course i love i mean I know that you can get a lot of free information and I probably did not need to take the class like but I don't know I feel like it's worth it you know to get all the input you can all the different teachers opinions and expertise you know and, and especially because I am not familiar with this kind of work she's done all the research for you and you can get a better result if you, um, you know, I don't know. Anywho, I'm usually a good enough. All right, that's definitely good enough. So yeah, I have one more to do. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to start playing around with a design. Um, so let me try to find a pencil. Or hey, how about a Sharpie? So um, I would say my little frog... He's going to be something like this, where he'll have little feet and his little legs, you know, something like that, I think. These are his front feet. And then he just has a big smile 
and big eyes. I don't know what his head looks like. <laughs> Something like that. Um, and he doesn't look very froggy in this picture, but he's something like that. So a very whimsical, you guys know I am not down with the realistic. I am. I get it. And also, I've seen a lot of mosaics on, like I said, on um, mosaic mentoring um, of people do their animals. Like they take a picture, like I could take a picture of Kirby and then they map it out color-wise and they do a mosaic of their pet and it's amazing it's incredible but i am i tend toward more whimsical style um i feel like my what makes me happy is color and kind of the mixed media vibe is where you can use any type of tesserae so it's a lot less uniform it'll be different heights and shapes and things and that's just what attracts me and what i like to play with so I'm just staying with that and um, that way taking all these classes I'm not just gonna imitate what one artist does like do it their way I'm I like to bring Sarah into it and I've learned that over all these years of creating and now with YouTube sharing and seeing other people's work I get so much from all of it and then I kind of combine it all and create something that's um, more from me than from anyone else which by the way I there's I have nothing against um, decorative painting where you're creating someone else's work like how I've done so many Renee Mullins what Alexa so many Renee, Renee Mullins um, pieces see look this is already dry this is a little wet um, but uh, you know, when, when I was first creating and it was my serenity, I used to just not want to think and not want to design or create. I just wanted to do that thing that they already made, like this. I just wanted this. And so I bought the pattern. They told me what colors to buy and where to put them. And that made me happy. It made me serene. I practiced the techniques that they teach to get that effect. And then once you learn and have practiced all the techniques, you can bring that to any art form that you want to, you know. Um, this is just like um, a sponging technique. So fun. All right. And I don't remember the artist who did that. All right, you guys. That's my prepping. The next step is going to be I'm going to create, I think, this little frog. So I'm going to figure out my design and um, start putting it on my rock. And I'm gonna gather up all the tesserae that I'll need to do that, which I'm probably gonna use uh, a mixture. I think I'll use a, a bunch of different stuff. Definitely ball chain. And that was another thing that I loved about Chris Emmert's um, pieces. She outlines everything with ball chain and I have a ton of ball chain so I just I just like the look of it um, all right that's it for now thanks for watching